This tutorial will describe the general usage of the four submarines available to control in the game. The Seawolf, Akula 1 Improved, Akula 2, 688 Improved, Kilo, and Kilo Improved classes. It will briefly describe all stations common to all and how to successfully operate these stations in conjunction with the NAV map station. For detailed information on each of the submarine classes and all major components to the game, we encourage you to consult the manual. This is the NAV map station. This is the central location where all contacts created by your platform sensors will reside. In the lower left corner of the station, on the taskbar, is the stations menu. We will use this to navigate to the substations on the four platforms. For a detailed description of the NAV map station, please consult the separate NAV map tutorial. The ship control station is the primary location to input course, depth, and speed changes for your submarine. The control to stream and retrieve the towed array is found in this station except for the Kilo submarine that does not have a towed array. In the case of the Kilo, the snorkel mast and batteries are managed from the ship control station. Many of the more commonly used maneuvering commands can also be utilized via the orders menu at the bottom of the screen. All subs have six distinct sonar stations. Each of these stations has a specific role and can be utilized to obtain target bearing, course, range, and speed depending on the capabilities of the sonar sensor. For a more detailed description of the submarine sonar capabilities, you should consult the separate sub sonar tutorial. When in the radar station, you must raise the radar mass to actively radiate and begin to make detections. When detection is made, you select the contact with the cursor and click the mark button, which will relay the contact's bearing and range to the nav map. The radio ESM station is the central location for all radio transmissions and mission updates. This information can be obtained from the taskbar by selecting the green box icon to switch to the radio traffic text history. When at the surface, you will automatically transmit all of your detected contact information to your allies when the radio mast is extended and you will receive their current list of link contacts as well. The ESM sensor is used for passive detection of radar emissions. The ESM is capable of not only providing the bearing to the emitting platform, but can also allow you to classify the contact by comparing it to those in its database. When you create the contact, the target bearing and classification will be shown in the nav map. The periscope provides the player with a bearing to the target, and with the help of the statometer station, you can derive the range and also classify the contact. Simply turn the periscope to face the target and press the mark button to create a new visual contact on the nav map. To use the statometer station to obtain a range to the contact, press the photo button and proceed to the statometer to process it. The statometer station uses the photo of a contact from the periscope to determine the contact's range, course, and class. The last photo taken from periscope appears in the video capture window to the left and the database of known platforms appears to the right. The TMA station, or target motion analysis, is used to compute a contact's bearing, range, course, and speed. This information, called target solution, is necessary to target a contact with your weapons. For a more detailed discussion of the TMA process, see the separate TMA tutorial. A new addition to the game, the sail bridge, allows you a new perspective from the submarine you are controlling when surfaced. The sail bridge provides three views. The free look, which provides a 360 degree naked eye view of the area. The shoulder mounted SAM launcher that can be utilized to attack helicopters and low flying airplanes. And the binoculars, which zoom from 2x to 16x, and the LLTV mode for night vision. Lastly, the fire control suite is where the detected contacts are targeted, weapons are selected, weapons are launched, and the countermeasures are deployed. Many of these functions can be implemented through the orders menu or the nav screen with some degree of success, but the fire control stations provide more control and a better chance for a weapon detonation. Consult the manual for additional details 
on all of the submarine stations and tactics to employ them successfully in the game. This tutorial will describe the general usage of the submarine sonar stations. It will briefly describe all sonar stations on the subs and how to successfully operate those stations in conjunction with the nav map screen. For detailed information on the sub sonars and all other components of the game, we encourage you to consult the manual. The narrowband display is a good display to start a sonar search because the narrowband display will normally have the first indication of a sonar contact. The narrowband display will present the discrete tonals, individual frequency signals that submarines, surface ships, and torpedoes will radiate through the water. Lower frequency signals are subject to less signal loss, called propagation loss, than higher frequency signals. Therefore, look for the initial detection on the sensor that covers the lower frequencies. For all the subs except the kilo, that's the tow to ray sonar. The window at the top of the display is the broadband search window and displays true bearing. The baffled area, 30 degrees either side of own ship heading, is the area where own ship masks contact signals. Sweep the cursor across the search window and look for the narrowband signals that will appear in the middle narrowband display window. Strong signals in the search window will stand out visibly from the background noise. The TOAD array presents two bearing signals for each contact, the true bearing and an ambiguous bearing. A course change can be made to resolve this bearing ambiguity. The bearing to the real contact will remain relatively unchanged, while the bearing to the ambiguous contact will shift by the amount of the course change. The TOAD array sonar is streamed far behind own ship, so it will take a few minutes before the TOAD array completes the course change. In this case, the contact bearing is real and the other contact is ambiguous. The display signature button turns on a database of narrowband signatures in the lower profile window. Page through the database to find a matching profile to help classify the contact. In this case, the contact signature profile appears to match the stored profile of an Oscar class SSGN. Let's mark one of the frequency lines and assign a sonar tracker to the signal. The sonar will then automatically follow the contact signal and periodically report the contact information to the TMA display. The TMA process is discussed in a separate TMA tutorial. Now that the contact has been classified, the USNI browser can be used to find information on the contact, including the contact's TPK value, turns per knot. The daemon display can now be used to estimate the contact's speed. This is an important clue to use while conducting TMA. The daemon display requires a broadband signal, so we'll go to the broadband display to mark the contact, then go to the daemon display. With the cursor placed on the lowest frequency octave and using the TPK value from the USNI browser, a speed estimate can be made. Although seldom used because they reveal the presence of the submarine, Submarines do have active sonars. The high frequency sonar is used for ice and mine detection. The medium frequency setting is used for a general active search. Set the range scale and transmit type and you're ready to transmit. Place the cursor on a detected contact and marking the contact will display this bearing and range information on the nav plot and the TMA plot. A single ping, although possibly revealing your presence, can be used to help sort out a confusing passive-only contact picture. The active intercept display can be used to detect other platforms that are transmitting on their active sonars, including active sono buoys. This concludes our sub-sonar tutorial. Please consult the manual for a more detailed description of how to use the sub-sonar stations and tactics to employ those stations successfully in this game. This tutorial will describe the general usage of the submarine and FIG-7 TMA displays. For detailed information on TMA and all other components of the game, we encourage you to consult the manual. TMA, Target Motion Analysis, 
is the technique used to determine range, course, and speed of a contact based on periodic contact bearing information provided from shipboard sensors, commonly referred to as bearings only TMA. For this tutorial, we will use the SSN-21 class submarine's whole mounted passive broadband sensor to provide the contact information, lines of bearing. All AI crewmen have been turned off. Assigning a sonar tracker to a contact means that the system will display updated bearing information every two minutes on both the navigation screen and the TMA display. Here on the navigation geoplot, the bearing to the contact is displayed, but the range to the contact is unknown. The length of the bearing line has no meaning and does not imply any range information. This is the TMA screen. This is where the sonar tracker will display the bearings for the selected tracks. Let's first select track Sierra 1 to show the bearing for the contact to the north, and then select Sierra 2 to show the contact to the south. Let's go back to Sierra 1 and move forward several minutes until there are several LOBs on the display. The ruler, or speed strip as it is sometimes referred to, is manipulated to generate possible TMA solutions of range, course, and speed. For LOBs displayed, there are an infinite number of solutions that fit the data. Fitting the data means that each tick mark on the ruler lines up with the LOB. The small plot in the upper left corner graphically displays the bearing difference between the ruler tick marks and the LOBs. A perfect solution stacks all the dots on the center line. Any information that helps narrow down one of the three parameters, range, course, or speed, can be used to help find a TMA solution. Geography may help with limiting the range, the direction of bearing drift will Come limit course possible courses, zero, one, and target zero, classification or demon analysis may help with speed estimates. Speed estimation using the demon display is fully described in the user's manual. Now assume through demon analysis that a speed estimate of 10 knots has been made. A 10 knot speed can be locked in and the ruler can then only be manipulated for range and course. The line of sound is the current bearing line between own ship and the contact. If both own ship and the contact's courses are on the same side of the line of sound, then the tactical situation by own ship is a lead situation. If the two courses are on opposite sides of the line of sound, then the situation for own Setting ship is a lag zero, condition. One, zero. For a lag situation, the crossed LOB range is a minimum range. For a lead situation, the cross bearings present a maximum range. One way to determine whether a lead or lag situation exists is to point the contact and observe the bearing drift. In this case, the bearing is drifting to right so the original situation was a lead. Continuing the course change will set up a lag situation and produce a minimum range of cross LOBs. The new own ship course or TMA leg will help narrow down possible TMA solutions that satisfy data from both TMA legs. TMA is as much art and puzzle solving as it is science. Use all available information to help estimate the three unknown parameters, range, course, and speed. Use the mission editor to set up practice TMA scenarios. Also, turn on your TMA auto crew and observe how he converges on a TMA solution. The FFG TMA display, though similar to the submarine TMA displays, does have some differences. The FFG TMA display represents the DRT, Dead Reckoning Tracer, that is found on the FIG-7 class frigate. The DRT is a light table with tracer paper where crewmen manually draw LOBs and manipulate speed strips or speed rulers to generate TMA solutions. The DRT cannot be panned. Repositioning the light bug means starting over on drawing the LOBs. That concludes our TMA tutorial. Please consult the manual for additional details employing TMA in the game.